reading to you from the first chapter, uh, I mean, uh, second chapter, first John, in the first verse. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then one year later, God called me to preach, and that's what I've been doing for these past 54 years. Now, I'll tell you, friends, <clears throat> I've said this many, many times. I sure didn't want to be a preacher, and I sure didn't think God would ever call me to preach. But I will tell you this, I am so glad that God called me. I thank Him every day for my call. I thank Him for my salvation experience. Well, friends, listen, I'll be with you for a half an hour tonight. Won't you kick off your slippers? Maybe you got a troubled heart tonight. Well, why don't you listen in and see what the Lord's got for us, okay? Tonight we're speaking on a subject that nobody in the world wants to hear about it. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to be on the broadcast tonight. Father, we know that this is a subject that no one wants to hear about, but we have to hear about it. And I'm so glad, Lord, long time ago, I fell upon my knees and I cried out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And my life changed that day. Help me to speak with power, with authority, with love and compassion. In Jesus' name, amen. We've uh, listed this message as sin. You know, friends, today we're hearing on television and radio four-letter words. We who know Jesus are getting sick of it. But let me tell you the worst word in the Bible, and that is sin. What is sin? Well, that's a breaking of the law of God on purpose. He who knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, that is sin. It's no secret that sin began in the Garden of Eden. But before we start pointing fingers, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are born in sin. Well, let's take a look at some who sin in the Bible. Now, regardless of how committed the sin of Cain was done in secret, Genesis 4, 8 through 10, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in a field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. You see, if Cain had been right with God and gave his best offering to the Lord, God would not have rejected his gift. Now let's take the sin of Joseph's brethren. It may be years before discovery in Genesis 4, 41, 21. And they said one to another, We are guilty, covering our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us. 
and we would not hear. Therefore is his dread, distress come upon us. What but on that terrible sin of Joseph, brother? Jealousy. They were jealous of the coat of many colors. Plus, their dad did kind of show favoritism toward Joseph. You know, friends, after my baby sister died, I'll have to admit, Mom and Dad treated me different because I was a baby then. And, uh, and you know what? My two brothers actually hated me. And I want you to know they tried everything they could to hurt me. And I'll give you an example. My dad had to take my mother to Portland every Saturday to a heart uh, specialist. And uh, we had 50 steers we were fattening up for market. Now, Dad told my brothers, don't you boys go out and run those cattle because they lose weight. So what did they do? Now, listen, I was five years old. They'd run the steers in a chute, and they'd put me on their backs and turn them out. Naturally, I got bucked off every time. It's a wonder I didn't get killed. Then one time, we were out in the barn, and the two boys said, uh, Hey, I want you to walk up, and it was about 20 Maybe not, maybe not 20 feet, but up to this beam, 12-inch beam going across the barn. Now, they said, walk across it. Now, I'm telling you, friends, I was five years old. Well, when I got out in the middle, they told me to jump. Wow, there was only about two feet of, of, of hay below me, and I had jumped. It almost killed me. Oh, you know why they hated me? Because I'd tattle on them when I caught them smoking or chewing tobacco. But like Joseph, I had an opportunity to do something good for my brothers. I witnessed them and prayed for them, and both of them accepted Christ as their Savior, and both of them are in heaven today. Maybe like the sin of Achan, it had been well covered up in Joshua 7.21. <clears throat> What I saw among the spoils, a goodly Babylonish, Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold or of 50 shekels. Then I covered them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Now Joshua was winning battle after battle when all of a sudden they started losing every battle. Well now, the Lord informed Joshua that there was sin in that camp. So Joshua called all of his men together and found out Achan had broken the law of God. He was not supposed to take any spoil from their enemies. Well, Achan coveted, which is in itself was a sin. But he confessed to the sin, and he and his family were stoned to death. Oh, friends, I'm so glad. We're living under grace. Well, maybe it's like the sin of Samson. It may be done reluctantly in Judges 16 and 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that he was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like another man. Now see that what sin had to do, Samson had slain men with a jaw, a thousand men with a jaw and bone of an ass. Samson went to a harlot, Delilah, and there's where he got into real sin. He told her where his strength was. Samson laid across Delilah's, Delilah's lamp and went to sleep. She had the guards cut off his hair. And he lost all his strength. Then they put out his eyes. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Now here is a classic example like the sin of Ahab. It may have been prompted by others, and Jezebel, his wife, said to him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread. 
and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Oh, listen. Now here is a story of Jezebel. You know, friend, she cost God more trouble than any woman in the Bible. She had a spineless husband who wanted Naboth's vineyard. So she lied about Naboth and got him killed. And then she gave the vineyard to her husband. The Lord does not let a person get away with sin, and they both died tragic deaths because of their sinful life. You know, the Bible says, He who is oft reproved, hardened his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. That's why in prison I warn men and women the, the, what the results of sin is. How many times in my Christian life have I witnessed to people and witnessed to them and tried to reach them for Christ, and they said no not so terribly long, I told you about a, an Indian boy that I witnessed to a lot in our mission. And uh, one night I invited him to come to our Saturday night evangelistic service. And he told me he didn't have to go listen to no blankety-blank preacher preach about a blankety-blank God. I said, son, you're going to regret what you just said. And next morning I received a phone call from the police department. And they wanted to know if this Indian boy lived in my mission. And I said, he did. They said, well, we found him cut in a million pieces, hit by a train. How many times I had warned that dear young Indian boy. And you know, friends, <clears throat> when we get on preach broadcast, I don't like to tell you that you're a bad person or you're a sinner. And I'm not telling you that. But I'm telling you this. If tonight you're listening to this broadcast and you don't repent or you're lost and don't repent, you could be falling in that category of being warned and you harden your neck and you shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. It's serious business. You know, I've oft time wondered, you know, we preachers, <clears throat> we know what the Bible says about life. We know what the Bible says about those who reject Jesus Christ as Savior. You know, I'd be driving down the road and hear some, some derogatory thing will be put on the back of a car in, uh, uh, about God and how they hate God and this and that. Well, I got news for you, friends. Someday, oh, someday, those people who make fun of God are going to stand before Jesus. It'll be too late then. And he'll be gone, be gone, ye cursed workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, I'm telling you tonight, God loves you. You say, but Cecil, you don't know what I've done. I don't have to know what you've done. I know that we're born in sin. And I know that all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. If you're lost tonight, I don't care what sin you have committed. My God is able to forgive it. If you repent, if you turn your back on the old way of life and recognize Jesus as the Son of God, then you could be forgiven. Well, it was a sin that sent Jesus to the cross of Calvary. Your sins and mine. That's how serious sin is. It costs God his only begotten son. I, I don't understand it, friends. I have said this many times. I don't understand how in the world that Adam and Eve could have lived in that beautiful garden and had fellowship with God in the cool of the evening. It, all they had to do is do what God asked them to do. He just said one thing. I don't want you to do just one thing, and that's don't eat of the fruit of knowledge. But what they do, Satan beguiled Eve and said, you know what? God's lying to you. Sure he is. If you eat of that fruit, you'll be as wise as God. Now, you see, 
immediately he tried to get her to doubt God. And beloved, if you doubt God or you doubt the word of God, you're in trouble. You say, well, do you believe everything in the Bible? Yeah, I do. I don't understand it all, but I believe it. I believe it by faith. You know, there's pick and choose Christians. Well, I believe there's a heaven, but I don't believe there's a hell. Fact of the matter is, uh, this, this men, when we have lunch every Friday, and uh, there's a young man, our waiter, and we witnessed to him, oh, my stars, how many times we witnessed. He's an alcoholic. And uh, he says to me the other day, he said, Cecil, do you believe there's a devil? Do you believe there's a hell? I said, I most assuredly do. He said, well, I don't. Well, I said, you're calling God a liar. Jesus said there was a hell. He told us about the rich man. He told us about the, the man that went to hell. He told us all about it. But I don't care. I don't believe it. Well, now that man is in serious trouble. Because we have warned him. We've, we've done everything we can do. Now, we can't do the work of the Holy Spirit, nor can you. All we can do is present the word. And if the Spirit of God has tugged their heart, they're, then they're going to find out what's going on. Well, 1 Kings 21, 20. And Ahab said unto Elijah, Hast found me, O mine enemy. And he answered, I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Now listen, committing sin deliberately is a dangerous thing, believe me. Well, like the sin of Belshazzar, it may have been done under the influence of strong drink. And I read in Daniel 5, 1, 2, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to thousands of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, might drink therein. Now, while they were drunk, they saw a finger of, man, of a man's hand writing on the wall. Well, old Belshazzar probably thought he was having DTs. I had DTs once, and it's a scary thing. Never do I ever want to see it again. The first thing that he did was call for the astrologers and soothsayers to interpret the message. Of course, they couldn't do it, nor can astrologers and soothsayers today tell the truth. He might as well use the Ouija board, which I tell you is a, no joke. Someone said, I know a guy who might be able to tell you what this means, and his name is Daniel. Boy, they sent for him, and the king said, if you interpret this dream, I will give you one-third of my kingdom. Daniel said, give it to someone else. You see... Some people cannot be bought with a price. So, Daniel said, Tickle, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. Oh, my friends, I'll bet that sobered old king up. Well, they gave gifts to Daniel and made him the third ruler in the kingdom. That night, King Belshazzar slain. What to say? The wages of sin is death. You say, okay, Cecil, you might say that. Well, what is the bottom line? Well, listen, no matter what sin you have committed, God will find you out. You say, my stars in the morning, that's not, that's not too good a news. Well, it isn't good news. But you want to hear some good news? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
as I lived my terrible life as an alcoholic, I knew it was sin. Oh, my friends, I wanted to ch change my life. I tried, re tried reformation, but what I needed was transformation. The Bible tells us that no drunkard will enter the kingdom of heaven. And I knew that was in the Bible. The Bible tells us that, uh, but that I didn't know, what I didn't know was, I should say, that God loved me. And friends, tonight, in spite of all the things you've done wrong, evil and sinful, God still loves you. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ah, but that godly preacher who I called out of bed at 3 a.m. gave me the good news that Jesus saves. Now listen, knowing no theology, all that I knew that I was a sinner and I wanted to be saved. So I cried out, God, be merciful to, to me, a sinner. And that's 55 years ago, and it still works. Friends, listen. You've heard this word, being delivered from alcohol or being delivered from drug addiction or whatever you're delivered from. He does that. Now, how long does it take to be saved? A couple of days, a week, a month? Or do you just join the church and you're okay? Oh, no. It's immediately he. When you ask him, when you repent, and you ask him to forgive you, it's immediate. Right there. Then I tell you, he reaches down, takes out that old nasty heart of stone, gives you a heart of flesh, puts God's Holy Spirit in your soul, and now you're a, a child of the King. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Well, <clears throat> has God's Holy Spirit revealed to your heart that you're a sinner and need to repent and receive Christ as your personal Savior? If so... Would you bow your head with me right now? Just bow your head right now. And oh, dear friends, please don't pray this if you don't mean it, because you can get in a lot of trouble. And here's how it goes. Dear Lord, in Jesus' precious name, I confess, Lord, that I'm a sinner. And tonight, Lord, I'm opening my heart, and I'm accepting you as my personal Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name. You prayed that prayer, get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. No, I won't use your name on the air. I won't embarrass you. And I won't sit down and write and ask you for any money. Don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. Now, that's a good deal. And if you can't afford to call, call me, collect, and I'll pay for the call. If you want my movie, Against All Hope, I'll send it to you free. I don't charge for my Christianity. Oh, no, I don't. Well, friends, I'm waiting for your call, 303-471-8534. And uh, let's see what we can do. Since I met
life is blessed, Savior. Send the cleanse that made me whole. Friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Mo. Dear friends, some, some of you might want to write a letter and you might want to ask for a, a movie. And if you do, just write to Cecil Mo, 9621 Burberry Lane, Highlands Ranch, Colorado, 80129. Now that's 9621 Burberry Lane. Highlands Ranch, Colorado, 80129. Well, friends, pray for me and my wife. Pray for our health. You know, we're getting up there pretty old. Uh, 85, that's not young. Although God didn't get a hold of Moses' heart till he was in his 80s. Well, listen, friends, until this time next Sunday night, I really want you to stay sweet. Keep looking up. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.